Have you ever pondered what it would be like if you could bring your deepest desires to life, those yearnings buried within the core of your being? This video is more than just an exploration, it's an invitation to challenge everything you thought you knew about the divine and the realm of possibility. Get ready to dive into a journey that goes beyond conventional perceptions, where imagination and faith become the most potent tools for unlocking the boundless potential of the I am. I'm not offering you to be just an observer of this mystery, I invite you to be part of it, to question, to delve into, and to discover how your innermost essence can shape reality. Are you ready to unlock the true power that lies within you? This journey is personal, a gateway to spiritual growth, and an opportunity to enlighten our perception of the divine. Prepare for a deep dive into a dialogue that promises to challenge your paradigms, provoke inquiries, and pave new paths of understanding. This is the time to undergo a significant transformation, making it crucial to engage with the content to the end for comprehensive insight. I encourage you to interact with this video by liking and subscribing to our channel. Your engagement is crucial for our community and motivates us to keep sharing valuable insights and reflections. Share in the comments, I am abundance and prosperity in all areas of my life. Now, let's delve into the content. Tonight, the message we share is practical and aims not to disturb but rather, to invite reflection on our conceptions of God and how these might differ from His true essence. Scriptures tell us of the birth of two twins, symbolizing the beginning of a grand spiritual narrative unfolding within each of us. Within you, there exist two nations or forces in constant rivalry, where ultimately, the younger will prevail over the older, as narrated in Genesis 25 verse 23. These symbolic elements reside within you, where the younger, representing the second man or the higher consciousness, is the Lord of Heaven. This superior being, sleeping within you, will awaken to become your guide. Most people are unaware of this divine presence within them, which in scriptures is identified with Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, or your sublime imagination, is the manifestation of God. Everything that exists and is experienced is an expression of this inner divinity. We are taught that the first man is limited by his sensory perceptions, while the second man, free from these constraints, can explore infinite states of consciousness to satisfy his spiritual hunger. In John 14 verse 1, we are invited not to be troubled and to believe in both God and our inner selves, revealing to us that this divine presence is ourselves. The invitation is to recognize that I am as God, as affirmed in Psalm 46 verse 10. If we can believe in this truth, all things will be possible for us, for all is possible for God, Matthew 19 verse 26. This awakening of divine consciousness within us is a call to action, to awaken from our spiritual slumber and to recognize that our imagination is the expression of God in us. In my Father's house, there are many mansions, meaning there are countless states of consciousness we can access. This metaphor, presented in John 14 verses 2 to 3, suggests that we can prepare these states for ourselves and, by doing so, we unite with our divine essence, allowing us to experience reality from a transformed perspective. This process is an invitation to use our imagination to achieve our desires, not from pleading, but from the assumption that we have already achieved what we wish for. True prayer, then, is the subjective appropriation of what we aim to achieve objectively. Faith in God translates into faith in ourselves, in our divine identity. Examining ourselves, as suggested in the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians, 13 5, is a call to discover God within us, in our innermost being. This recognition of our internal divinity is the first step towards manifesting our deepest desires, guided by the certainty that I am is, indeed, the presence of God in us. In the vast universe of possibilities that consciousness offers, I deliberately choose the state of being I wish to manifest, without seeking external validation. I immerse myself in that desired state, guided by the principle of not asking for others what I wouldn't desire for myself, thus respecting the golden rule. This approach ensures that my desires, such as achieving security, well-being, health, and making a positive contribution to the world, as well as enjoying fulfilling and harmonious relationships, are legitimate and attainable. The world unfolds as a vast field ready for cultivation. The essence lies in mentally inhabiting the desired state, adopting the perspective of already living from that place of fulfillment, rather than merely longing for it from afar. 
by clearly defining what I want, I allow myself to enter and live from that state, making it the lens through which I view and experience my surroundings. This preferred state of consciousness becomes my true abode, though not a place where I wish to remain stagnant. The realm of consciousness offers a space for each one of us, and by discovering that inner place, I automatically integrate into it. I aspire to contribute to the collective well-being, live comfortably and securely, without feeling shame or limitations. I visualize a state where I can face any circumstance with dignity, not allowing my past or current situations to define my worth. By naturally inhabiting this ideal state, it becomes my tangible reality. This process is an awakening to my inner power and a constant reminder that the divine realm resides within me. Even though external circumstances may seem limiting, it is through accessing my inner self that I can overcome these barriers, for only I know my true ambitions and desires. Let me share a personal experience that illustrates this principle. At a point in my life, I faced challenges that seemed insurmountable. After a period of turbulence, I decided to travel with my family to Barbados, paying little attention to the details of our return. After enjoying a few tranquil months, the reality of departure imposed itself with the news that we could not return before October due to high ticket demand. However, in April, while reflecting in my room in Barbados, I vividly visualized the moment of our departure, imagining my family and me boarding a ship that would take us back to New York. This visualization was so powerful that the next day, I received a call from the shipping company offering us a return passage due to a last-minute cancellation. Despite the limitations of the cabin, we accepted the offer, and curiously, the boarding process unfolded exactly as I had imagined. This experience reaffirmed my belief in the power of visualization and conscious manifestation. Despite long waiting lists and seemingly unfavorable circumstances, my family and I managed to return home following the exact order I had visualized. This experience was not only a demonstration of the principle of consciously manifesting our desires but also a practical application of faith in the possibility of receiving what we truly desire, as taught by the scriptures. At that moment, the need to board the ship in a small boat, as I had foreseen, further confirmed my belief in the ability to influence our reality through consciousness and directed intention. In the context of Christian spirituality, encountering the Lord Jesus Christ is not conceived as an external search but rather as the recognition of His intrinsic presence. He reveals Himself within us, reflecting our own image and likeness. My intention in sharing this is to motivate you to find that divine presence within you. Eventually, you will live a personal connection with the divine, reaching a full understanding of the identity of the Lord Jesus Christ and the Father. I encourage you to experience and explore without limits. I assure you that you will discover the astonishing power of your imagination, which never fails. In the narrative we begin tonight, two brothers are presented before their father, Isaac, who has lost his sight. The brothers are Esau, the elder, characterized by his body hair, symbolizing the material and external, and Jacob, the younger, smooth and hairless, representing the spiritual and internal, also known as the supplanter. Isaac, desiring his favorite dish, venison, entrusts Esau, the hunter, to prepare it. However, Jacob, upon learning of his father's wish, decides to deceive him. He disguises himself with goat skin to simulate being Esau and thus obtain the paternal blessing. Isaac, deceived by the feel of the skin, blesses Jacob believing he is Esau. This story symbolizes an internal process. By closing our eyes, we identify with Isaac, unable to see the external. Internally, both brothers, Esau and Jacob, coexist. By ignoring the external, we allow Jacob, representing our inner desire, to manifest first and deceive our being, symbolized by Isaac. Our I am, which is God, waits to feel the reality of what we desire, and upon feeling it as real and natural, grants the blessing. Upon opening our eyes, we realize that, although we physically remain in the same place, we have granted reality to a desired state, blessing it to manifest. This process, consciously repeated, never fails. Those who practice it will discover it is infallible. I invite you to reflect on the possibility that the divinity you seek outside, in reality, resides within you, manifesting through your imagination. 
If this idea does not seem blasphemous to you and you are willing to consider it, I sincerely hope you can experience it. Although your belief or disbelief does not alter my conviction, I trust that the truth will reveal itself to you through experience. My goal is to facilitate that discovery, though I cannot compel you to believe. Only through your own exploration can you overcome the limitations imposed by external beliefs. Dissatisfaction is a constant human condition, a void that can only be filled with a direct experience of the divine. The true spiritual hunger, as mentioned in Amos 8 verse 11, is not satisfied with external rituals or religious practices but with a personal encounter with God. I share my understanding of this truth so that, by closing your eyes to the illusions of the world, you discover the divine reality within you. This path is not easy, but faith and perseverance will lead you to an immeasurable reward. Always act with compassion and respect, following the golden rule. My purpose is not to convince skeptics but to fulfill my mission of sharing this infallible principle. Do not seek divinity outside, recognize and appreciate the divine power within you. That power is the Lord Jesus Christ in you, and there is no other. Deep understanding of this truth is key to true spiritual transformation. Beyond stories and parables, I invite you to live the essence of these teachings and allow them to transform your life. I hope that, by the end of our time together, you can affirm having found what you were seeking. Now, let's dedicate a moment to silence and inner reflection.